there were a lot of times my freshman year where I would just like sit and be like, I have no clue what's going on with my life right now. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're gonna be talking about all of the things that I did wrong freshman year of college. I was just gonna talk about what my freshman experience was like, hoping that like it would be relatable to you guys and that you would hopefully find some wisdom in it, but I realized that most of my freshman year, I could have done a lot of things better. So I'm just gonna be going through the issues that I faced and a lot of the things that I wish I could have done better and that I would advise that you guys don't do if you are a freshman in college right now. If you're not a freshman and you're in high school, then this will still apply to you because you guys will know how to tackle your freshman year. And if you guys are older my age or any older than I am, I'm a junior in college right now, then hopefully you guys will relate to some of the stuff that I might have done wrong. It was hard to adapt to college and college life and to know exactly the right path to take and what decisions to make and what to prioritize and everything. So for me, it was pretty rocky, but um, I'm not sure if all freshmen experience this, and I'm not saying that your freshman year is gonna be like this if you make any of the choices that I made. I'm just saying that the combination of all the things that I'm about to say really left me in a place where going into my sophomore year, I had to make like a ton of changes. So um, yeah, let's just get right into it. So the first one is that I entered college in a relationship and that's not a bad thing. I know a lot of people that enter college in a relationship and that's like not a bad thing. Like don't get me wrong, don't go like breaking up with your boyfriend or whatever because I said that I entered college in a relationship and my freshman year was rough. Like the reason why it didn't work out that I was in a relationship it took a lot of the focus away from like my own life and into the relationship and the relationship became too big of a portion of my life to a point where it was unhealthy and i feel like also when you enter college in a relationship like unless you're very good at prioritizing your time and knowing when to say no in a relationship and say like no i have other priorities right now especially when you miss that person it's really hard it's going to be really difficult to start new relationships and new like friendships and like close connections with people at your college when your heart is so far away if that makes any sense because like a relationship takes a lot of your emotional energy and especially when you're in college and times are tough the first person you'll want to go to is your significant other who isn't with you all the time unless you guys go to the same college so it'll be really difficult for you to commit to new friendships when you're in that relationship or at least that's what i experienced well another thing about the relationship that i had i let it last way too long so like i already knew that it was falling apart well before we had actually broken up and it had just gotten like really unhealthy and we were just arguing all the time and i spent a lot of time like that i could have spent studying or hanging out with friends trying to make things work with this relationship that was clearly not working so my advice to you if you're entering college in a relationship like set boundaries for yourselves like have that conversation that this is going to be difficult and be realistic like obviously the relationship is not going to stay the same because you're entering different phases of your life so figure out what's gonna work like okay we're only gonna call after all our classes and homework are done or we can like have dates on this days or we'll visit this time or whatever like just set boundaries and make sure that you talk about how your relationship's gonna change or make sure that you both want it to go in the same direction because if you have one idea of what the relationship's gonna be like while you're in college and the other person has another idea of what the relationship's gonna be like that's just gonna clash at some point and it's gonna be really difficult because you're gonna be managing your own life while also trying to manage this relationship at the same time. Second thing, so after I finally got out of this relationship that wasn't working out, I jumped right into a new relationship, which was probably the worst choice I, probably, I, I could have made for myself. 
I got into a new relationship and not only was that like dumb because I wasn't over the past relationship, it was dumb because the reasons why I broke up with my ex, I was blaming it on the distance basically, but it wasn't the distance that broke us apart. It was the changes in our relationship that we couldn't work through. So it wasn't the distance between like our physical like lives. It was the distance between our our hearts and our minds at that point like our goals were different our our aspirations were different what we wanted out of the relationship and what we needed from the relationship was different and whether we needed the relationship or not anymore was also different because in high school it feels a lot like you need this person like they're they're a part of your life and then you start growing up and you realize wait i'm i'm an independent person i'm an individual and i could actually do this on my own and it turns into not needing that person, but just truly, really wanting them in your life. And then sometimes you'll realize like, once that need is gone, that need that you think is there is gone. The desire for them is also gone, which is... But yeah, so I jumped into a new relationship and this did not help at all. First of all, I was getting over my previous relationship, which was like a two year relationship. So it was very difficult to get over. On top of that, I just found myself like latching onto someone else when I was trying to grow as like my own person. How am I supposed to grow on my own if I'm consistently latching onto someone else? And when I thought it was the distance that was getting in between us, I got into this new relationship and realized that I was clinging on so much and we were seeing each other so much and depending on each other so much for our daily like lives because our lives got so intertwined that it ended up like consuming everything in my life. And this was around the second semester of freshman year. So this relationship really ate up a lot of my friendships. I know I said like when there's distance, you miss them and then you want to latch onto them more. But when they're there all the time and they're available and you know their schedule, you know where they'll be, you know when they have lunch, you run into each other in the dining hall, you like see each other passing in classes, you just, you get so latched on to that person that unless it's a very healthy relationship and you entered it in the right mindset and you're both ready and you're both stable when it comes to like academics and you're both like okay to like start this relationship, it can get very unhealthy very quickly and that's what happened to me so this relationship ended up ending after a few months and to be honest i'm kind of grateful this goes along with the next thing i spent very little time alone and it wasn't even because of the relationships like even when i was single when i was in those times where i was single i would i would latch on to my friends i would like call my family i would just be with people all the time i would find clubs to go to i would find events to go to i would go to the city like i was never really like alone able to think like contemplating like where i want to go or actually like spending time like having my own purpose or anything it was just like i was getting my motivation from everyone else i was getting my inspiration from everyone else i was getting my love for life from everyone else i don't know i should have spent more time like focusing on myself because this is such a time of growth and now that i'm in my third year i'm realizing like you only have a four-year transition from like high school to like being a real adult and people think of college as like oh like i need to grow educationally like i need to build myself for my career but you also have to build yourself as a human and build your values and build yourself up that's really hard to do when you're around a billion people who are different from you and growing at different rates and in different ways so like it's really important that you spend time alone and you figure yourself out and what you want because up until this point up until college you've had your family telling you what you want you've had your friends telling you what you want like w this is the only time that you get to like actually spend time alone and decide okay this is this is really what i want to do like this is the path I want to take and then chasing that and then going around to people and saying like, hey, this is what I want and them supporting you because in college, like we're so supportive of each other. Like I don't even go to a very social school, but still when I go up to people and I tell them like, hey, I'm starting a YouTube channel and I'm so excited about it. They may not watch YouTube at all. They may not care about like social media or 
like marketing yourself or entertainment or anything but they'll still be like wow that's really cool i'm happy for you let me know when you post something i'll watch it for you even if they're not interested like that support is something that you won't get anywhere else in your life besides college so eat that up while you have it the next thing it sounds like a paradox but i also isolated myself a lot so after i got out of these relationships i dealt with a lot of it alone or by neglecting my feelings altogether and distracting myself with the people around me so when i was dealing with something i typically just kind of swallowed it it was really hard for me to actually like get deep down into my feelings and talk to people about it these are the things that led up to me feeling isolated and me feeling lonely and me having to build so many new relationships sophomore year and to rebuild the ones I had already made because I didn't actually get close with anyone. Anyone that you ask will say that I had a lot of friends. Like I had so many friends, but I didn't get that connection or that closeness with anyone until around my second semester of sophomore year. Like only now am I really beginning to see who my true friends are at college. Looking back, I wasted so much time just feeling bad for myself or making decisions that weren't good for me. All right. I didn't find a study space either. So in high school, which I'm sure is the case for a lot of people, I didn't have to study that much. Like when I did study, it was like reviewing the material or like, reading an article that we read in class or rereading my notes or re-going through the PowerPoint of the prof I mean, professor, the teacher. Um, and then you get to college and you actually have to study. I didn't know how to study. I never learned how to study. I didn't know how to properly teach my mind how to retain information. So not only not knowing how to study, I didn't have a place where I could study comfortably. Like when I did my homework, I did my homework in my bed and that was another mistake. And I did so many academic things on my bed that like it was hard for me to see that as like a sleeping place and hard for me to see it as a study place like it was this weird gray area and that's just like not good for you so i couldn't study at my desk because i hated my room i just thought my room was ugly and there were also like i always had people coming in and out of it and i couldn't focus and i I don't know, I just like didn't like my room and the place where I would normally study. And the library was always too loud or too quiet for me. Like I need this like in between where like I'm around people and I hear people around me and there's like life around me. It's not like the world died and I'm just sitting here studying stuff that I don't want to study, especially freshman year because it was all like gen ed, but I had to. So finding that study space is so important. And starting sophomore year, I found a lot of places where I could study comfortably and feel like focused and zen in it so yeah find your study space it's really important if that's a dining hall for you because you get free food and you could snack like do that if it's like an office building if it's like one of the academic buildings or the library or even your room if you find like a good area to study in your room like now i love my room and now i can study in it which you guys will see in the room tour that i'm gonna do which i keep talking about but i'm i haven't done it yet find a study space it's so important not only figuring out how you study, which everyone else will tell you, like learn how to learn and all that, but find the space where you can do it in. It's so important. Like environment affects you so much. So anyway, find a study space. The next thing is, I actually touched upon this, gen eds. I hated them, but I took them really for granted because now that I'm not taking math, I miss math. I see people doing math and I'm like, wow, reorganizing numbers and variables, that's cool. I miss it, you know? Um, I miss my English class because we talked about like literature and now I read on my own and I'm like, I want someone to talk to about this, but I can't. Like, my friends don't read the same books that I do. So don't take your gen eds for granted. They're there for a reason. They really are background for all of your classes. Like I'm a business major, but I still need to reorganize variables sometimes when I'm doing optimization. I'm a business major, but I still need literature because I still read articles. I still need to know how to analyze these things. And like, yes, they're annoying. Yes, you don't want to take them. Yes, they're not within your major, but they're so useful. It'll help you so much to learn your study habits and everything that you need to learn when there's not so much pressure on you yet because they're general education and this is the only time that you'll be taking classes that are with people of different majors besides electives so don't take for granted that you'll have like different majors in your class like take advantage of that diversity make friends because you're not gonna see them 
as much once we're deep into our curriculums. Next thing, I often cut class. My mom's gonna yell at me for this one. Hey mom. Shout out to my mom who watches all of my videos and is watching this one right now and is probably gonna question me about everything that I'm saying right now. Anyway, what's up mom? Um, I often skip class. I did this like all the time. And now looking back on this, I'm like, what was I doing? Why was I doing that? I skipped more than was healthy for me. I didn't miss any material though. That's, that's the thing. So the reason why I cut class was they were the gen eds and I hated them and I thought they were really easy. The problem with skipping class though is the lack of discipline. Discipline is so important in college. Time management is so important. If you're not doing a lot and you're not living up to your obligations, how do you manage the time? Because you'll just have unlimited time to do anything that you want. And let me tell you, as a freshman in college, that is not going to work out for you. Like skipping class and having like unlimited time to do whatever you want with no structure is not going to work out for you. It just, it wasn't healthy and it made me really depressed, which I'll talk about at some point in a different video because that's a whole other story. Um, but it really just has an impact on your life when you take all of the structure out of it because we're like, as humans, we're fairly structured people. Um, and even if you don't like routine, you still need some structure to your day. It's so important that you keep this structure and you go to classes because you're paying for it also, or your parents are paying for it, or someone's paying for it. Don't take it for granted because a lot of people don't have the opportunities that you have. But like, literally, the majority of the world doesn't get to have the education that we get to have. Like, if you're going to a university, you're already blessed as it is. So don't take that for granted. And keep that structure. It's good for your mental health. And when you need to skip class, always reach out to your professor. Always talk to them, let them know what's going on. Be honest with them because I've had days where I like literally email my professor, hey, I'm just overwhelmed today. I am gonna take the day off. And they'll be understanding and they'll always say feel better as long as you don't take this for granted. Again, like you, you can't take advantage of professors. You can't take advantage of like the leeway that people will give you because they understand that college is hard. I didn't allocate time to do things that I enjoyed. So clearly I've fixed that problem. I have a YouTube channel now, I have a podcast, I have a blog. I am very involved in clubs. I am constantly doing a bunch of activities. In the corner over there, you can see a basket of yarn. I constantly knit things and make things. Um, I love writing, I write, I play music. It's just leisurely activities. Having those things that you're doing just for fun, like primarily for your leisure, to relax yourself, to make yourself happy, to just enjoy time by yourself is so important. If there were an MVP of this list, it would be allocate time to do things that you enjoy. And the reason for this, it goes into everything else. Like, how are you supposed to manage your alone time when you're in a relationship and missing someone if you don't have things to do and you don't plan to do the things that you enjoy? How are you supposed to not be too clingy in a relationship that you've just started if you don't have things that you enjoy. What are you supposed to share with that person anyway if you don't have things that you enjoy? What are they supposed to like about you if you don't have things that you enjoy? What is there to get to know about you? You know, like there are stories about you, but what's in the present? What are you right now? Create yourself using the things that you enjoy. When you're spending time alone, like it forces you to spend time alone if you have things that you do alone. It forces you to not feel isolated because you're actually doing something. You're not just laying in bed being like, I feel so sorry for myself because my friends are too busy for me right now. Of course they are, we're all college students. Like, I could make a whole very like sassy video about this, but like, it took me a really long time to realize that, yes, my friends are too busy for me. We're all in college, I'm too busy for them too. And if I'm not too busy for them, I'm doing something wrong. And we'll make time for each other. It should be making time for each other. It shouldn't be like, I have so much free time, where are my friends? Do things that you enjoy. If you allocate time for it, you are not gonna feel like skipping class to do something you enjoy. I know a lot of my guy friends, freshman year, they would skip class to play video games because they had no other time to play video games and they're like, this class is useless, so I might as well skip it to play video games. Spend the time that you're supposed to spend doing leisurely activities and spend the time you're supposed to spend in class doing class things. So like. Allocate your time in a way where you're doing the things you're supposed to be doing and the times where you're supposed to be doing it. Be present where you are, when you are, and only go to a place if you're going to be present there. 
but also like know your commitments if that makes sense like there's a balance find your balance um it's hard it's really hard but if you allocate time to do things that you enjoy you won't procrastinate the things that you're supposed to do as much because like why would i go watch netflix right now when i plan to study now and i know watching netflix time is later and i won't be able to study as well later you know so just tackle your day in a way that's logical and that makes sense to you and that's most helpful and productive for you so optimize your time basically um but while you're optimizing your time, make sure that you take time to yourself to do the things that you enjoy. There is nothing more important than allocating time to do things that you enjoy. There's a lot of parts of college that are difficult, that are stressful, that will push you into a mental health hole. Find those things that dig you back out of it because there are a lot of people struggling out there right now. There are a lot of people in college that are struggling daily. The suicide rates of college students has skyrocketed in the past like decade. We don't need these rates to continue rising. We don't need more people suffering. What we need is more people doing the things that they enjoy and finding ways to incorporate that into their lives to make them productive people and happy people because the world could be so much happier if everyone just spent a little time doing things that they enjoy. Like imagine how much better your day would be if you started off doing something that you enjoy or ended it doing something that you enjoy. How much nicer you'll be to people, how much more relaxed you would be in environments where you don't want to be for example class for some people some people hate class and if that's that's you remember like constantly remember like okay later i'll be doing this it's okay like just focus now later i'll be doing this focus now anyway i didn't join any clubs then i joined too many this is like a typical freshman mistake i started off the year and i was like i don't want to join too many clubs so i didn't join any um, dumb. I founded an acapella group, um, at my school, or, like, co-founded. There was, like, a group of us, a huge group of us, and we co-founded an acapella group here, and then I was in another acapella group. So, basically, all I did was sing acapella as clubs. Like, that built no leadership, if I'm being honest. It didn't help me really connect with as many people as I could have been connecting with, and then after that, I realized all of that and then joined, like, 5,000 clubs. And I was overwhelmed, obviously. So, um, just tips for that. Join only things that you're truly interested in. Don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to later say, hey, I thought I'd be interested in this and it turns out that I'm not because people do that all the time. And the last bullet point, I did not take care of my physical health. So my like internal health fell apart. Like I had chest pain all the time because like anxiety was so high. I couldn't eat because I was so stressed. And then I was overeating. I was just tearing apart my physical body and I would go to the gym and I would work out and that was the first time that I actually really started going to the gym. But I didn't have fitness goals that were realistic. I didn't know what I wanted out of going to the gym. I would just kind of go because everyone went. That's good coffee. And yeah, overall, like, I just didn't take care of myself and I was eating, like, actual garbage. And I ate so much of the fried crap that they made, like, french fries and they always had chicken nuggets and they, like, when your mom's not making you food or when, like, your family's not watching what you're doing, you end up not realizing the crap that you're putting into your body. And that's what happened to me. I just felt my physical health deteriorate and... Like, I wasn't practicing any type of self-care at all. Like, my skincare routine was non-existent. My, like, just, my life was just so unhealthy. And I would take the elevator even if I was going to the second floor. Like, I wouldn't walk up the stairs. And I, just, I don't know, I don't know what it was. I think part of it was, like, the me feeling bad for myself for, like, hating my classes and, like, not having friends that I felt were like stable like not that they were unstable people but like the friendships were unstable and like I just think that like the combination of all of those things made me just a very negative and unhappy person and I spent a lot of my time like kind of just like grudging around like oh another day another like 
day at college, another day with the friends that I have, another day with like the life that I'm living. I don't know, I just like was stuck in this wormhole of like everything sucks. And this happens to a lot of people and I think a lot of it comes from imposter syndrome, which I think I'm gonna be making a whole podcast episode about. So I'm not gonna talk too much about imposter syndrome right now, but basically what it is is where you feel like at the school that you're at, you didn't deserve to get in or that you're just like living in someone else's shoes and you're not able to be your full self. Imposter syndrome is so real and it's so important to catch yourself, but we will talk about that in another video because this video is way too long. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that it was helpful to you. Leave in the comments down below if any of this related to you or if this helped you out at all. I hope that your freshman year is or was way better than mine was and I hope that you learned a little bit from this or got something out of this. If you enjoyed this type of content, give this video a like so that I know to make more of these types of videos. Other than that, I will see you guys all in my next video.